What is my x-axis? What are my units for my x-axis? Time. Time, so we're talking seconds, maybe? We'll call it seconds. Okay. So basically, what we're doing today, the only difference is today, we're going to really pay attention to the domain. But I want to think about it as time, because that makes us figure out and think about this as, okay, we're going to make a giant, giant flash ride. Because it doesn't take 20, it doesn't take 10 seconds to go from the high part down to where it's getting flat, right? And then it goes up and has a little spiral, ends up way over here, right? If it took 40 seconds to get all the way across, we're talking like a mile long flash. So maybe actually we should change it to one, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. That makes more sense. We'll make a regular flash. Okay. So somebody described the shape at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. What does the flash kind of look like? Does it start kind of upright and it goes down like this? Okay, that's one side, one part of what kind of shape? What kind of shape is that? Parabola. You guys agree that I could say it's kind of like, let's say it goes to here. Right? That's half of a parabola, right? Okay, so if you found the function for this parabola, say if this was, you know, this is what the whole parabola would look like we'd be able to figure out what the vertex is based on the x and the y values. We'd be able to find what this function is. I'm just going to call this function f of x, okay? Whatever it is, you know, this would be like um, f of x equal to the quantity of x plus 1 squared plus 1, I suppose. You're going to be able to play around with sliders at this point to create the different shapes and move them around. The key, though, is to look at the number of seconds that this is occurring. Why didn't I write this part of the problem? Because that's going to be another part of the problem. We're going to make it so that this function, f of x, <clears throat> is between 0 and what? 1. Okay. So between 0 and 1, the function goes like this. What should I do with the next part? What do you think? Because I don't know that it would go here and just go straight across. Maybe we have another kind of like slight curve. Or should we, let's just make it go straight. Let's just make it go straight. So I'll say this is at one. So let's say, you know, it's a little bit off, but it goes here and then goes straight across. That's kind of better. Okay. And what is that function? How would you call it? What would you call it? I'd say that's y is equal to one. Because this line goes in both directions forever, but I've restrained it between one second and two seconds, right? So we'll just call this g of x. You'll be figuring out the actual equations when you guys create your own, but you'll have sliders. So again, you can kind of move it based with the sliders and then just say, that's my quadrat between this duration. So this would be between one and two. In other words, 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Right? It's between those upper and lower limits. This is not an x and a y. That's a weird bracket. This is the lower and upper limit of my domain. Okay, so I should actually clarify that. That is the restriction. It's our domain restriction. Okay. Uh, what next? What, what next? What happens then? It goes kind of up, either like half of a parabola or an exponential. You could just say it's like an exponential. So let's say that this one is between here, it just kind of is going to go up. Okay. And we do not know the math yet, but it does a corkscrew right here, okay? We're going to just, we definitely don't know the math yet for that. A curved surface and rotating. You could not build any of these roller coasters without uh, computer generated design and, and, and drafting. Okay, so we're going to just say, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a twist right here. This function we'll call h of x. It'd be some kind of exponential. Exponential. Um, and what is, the, what is the limit for this? Let's say it ends right here for a second. What is my domain restriction for this? Domain between Two and four. You see, we have three different 
three different functions here. We have them broken off, so there's no overlap. When you guys get to when you guys get to uh, graphing these on Desmos, some people are leaving them with like this extra piece of track here and this extra piece of track. It's because the domain restrictions weren't really precise. You want it so that there's just different parts to it. Here we have the first part is this function, zero to one, one to two, straight line. That's our function. Two to four. Really, it's just this last interval that we looked at. And we have an exponential. Do you guys see how we're going to build these? OK. So that's actually a pretty good, I think, intro. We want to think about the x-axis as time. That helps us just to see the window a little clearer. What's happening between two and four seconds? We're starting to go up the incline and towards the spiral. Okay. Uh, thumbs up, sideways down for just like you know, the concept of building it. OK, good. So here we're just going to get into a little bit of the notation so you guys can recognize exactly what, uh, what all that means. And piecewise means that we build it in pieces. You build it in pieces. It's also a phrase, just means, it just means piecewise. So like uh, if I was, you know, uh, let's see. You know the coins that were on the ground, you had to pick up with the clip, the, the pinchers and bring them over to the jar. That's a piecewise action. You're doing one piece at a time. Okay. So piecewise just means that there's one part, and then there's another part, then there's another part. Okay. So allows for different segments of functions over specific intervals. You see that this right here is x is equal to x, y is equal to x squared. That's one of our parent functions. But it doesn't continue all the way and up into the sides. Where does it stop? At 1, from negative infinity, you know, it continues here. And then at 1, it's going to stop with an open bracket. So there's a open dot. Over here, we have x is equal to negative 1. So it would be down here, negative 1, and go up. But we're going to make it a hard bracket at 1 because I have a closed dot. And it just goes up to positive infinity. Or excuse me, it goes in the domain towards positive infinity. So these are our domains. And the hint here is really to just think of your x values as time. Think about it as time, then maybe it's a little easier to, to imagine. So this one, uh, the first function goes until the second number one or minute number one. And then from, from minute one all the way to minute you know, infinity, it's just going up and over. Again, we're just talking about cropping from left to right cropping from left to right with the photo analogy. We're just saying what part of the function is included. When it's abstract like this, it can go to infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity. When we have a scenario, we're going to keep it kind of in practical values. Because you can't have a roller coaster that goes to negative infinity. Reminder, open dot corresponds to this parenthesis bracket. Um, solid. Solid point here, solid dot, is our hard bracket. This means you're including the in value, the in limit. This means you're not including that. It goes right up to it, but does not include the point at that value. Okay. So let's look and see. You're going to see it in this notation. System, systems notation, y is equal to, y is equal to x squared if, right, Negative infinity is less than x is less than 1. I'm writing it as an inequality, so you see it both ways. Right. It's saying that f of x, y, y is equal to x squared if x is between these two values. y is equal to x minus 1 if, uh, let's see, 1 is less than or equal to x is less than positive infinity. And that's what that graph looks like. Okay. I always look here. I always look to what the limitation is. What's the shared limitation here? One. So that's why I made the dashed line at one. I know one is one function is going to go to that limit for the domain, and the other one is going to continue from that limit if they align like this, where we have one. We have one. These aren't things that you can just say. Well, there's one and one. Does that always mean something? You have to really read it, interpret it one thing at a time. Uh, this is saying. Yeah, this one does go all the way to 1 from the left side, and then 1 all the way to the right for the next one. Okay. 
Thumbs up sideways down for this so far. Yeah? Okay, great. So now let's try to graph it. You will have four problems to graph on uh, in the classwork homework. It's from the uh, workbook. And you can use Desmos to graph them. Okay? I want you to start to practice. All of this is about getting to the point where you know, this is the absolute value. We're going to learn how to shift it left to right. We're going to learn to shift it up and down. So the practice today on Desmos is more with sliders. You can adjust the H value to bring it side to side. You can adjust the K value to bring it up and down. So you're going to be doing that, and um, you're going to be restricting the domain. So if I wanted the domain to go up to this point, I'd have to restrict it so my, my graph would look like this, right? It goes up to the X value right at that point. So we're dealing with the domain, restricting it, maybe restricting it in different ways, and also moving it up side to side. Okay, so that's how we're going to play with that. Let's try to graph this now. So, let's see. Okay, let's graph this one in red. Essentially, this is y is equal to x plus, or, uh, x plus 1. So, y-intercept at... One. Slope, 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. I'm not paying attention to the domain yet. I'm showing that you can first graph them on there if you like, and then erase and find the borders for it if you have a pencil. You don't have to do this every time. I'm trying to show how we're going to cut things up because they're going to overlap when I write this in here. Okay x squared. x squared is this. It's one of our parent functions. It's a parabola right through the origin. There's no translation up and down side to side for that. Okay. So looking at that, now I want you to go ahead and put a dotted line where you think our boundary. Where is it going to be a matter of from this side to the left we have this function, from this side to the right we have this function. Where is it? Look at the domain. Maybe that gives you a hint. What do you think? Uh, tell your name. Tell your name. What do you think? X is 1. You see that the top function, the red function, goes all the way, continues from the left all the way to 1. The blue function starts at 1 and goes to the right all the way to infinity. So watch, I'm going to put a 1 here. I guess 1 is like there. That's our boundary. Now, let's look at the red first. From negative infinity to 1, and it's a soft bracket, parenthesis. So what should I put as far as right where the red one meets our boundary line? What should I put? Open dot. And then I know that this is telling me it only goes to here. So guess what I should do with the function on the other side? Erase it. Stay with me if that, stay with me. This y is equal to x squared is the blue function. And it at 1, at 1, does it have an open or closed dot? Closed dot right here. What should I do to the left of that one? Erase it to the left. Take this out. Take that out. Take that out. You see? So we have the top red function 
y is equal to x plus 1. It continues. You know, this, this from the left, it's, it's way down there, but it's, it's, you know, we're going uphill, 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 all the way to 1. That's where it stops, at 1. Soft bracket, open dot. Here, this x squared goes from 1 to positive infinity. So it starts here at 1, not 1 for y. We're only looking at the boundary with domain of x. What's happening on that side of the boundary and on this side? On this side, closed dot, hard bracket, and it continues to the right. I keep going uphill as I go towards positive infinity. Okay. It's the window. Again, it's left to right. It's a window for x. The window for x. What part are we looking at of the function? We had to erase this part because this function, x squared, doesn't exist over here. This domain says exactly where it exists. It tells you exactly how to crop. You can think about it that way. This is, these are the crops. This is how they want you to crop the function. Okay. If the picture cropping made sense, that's an analogy that might continue with that. Okay. And TN, long shot over the lights. Everyone watch out over there. No, nope, not close. Oh, okay. Anticlimactic. Dang. All right. Uh, thumbs up sideways down now. What do you guys think? You want to see another one? Yeah. Just another, right? No big deal. No big deal. All right, let's look at another one right here. We'll actually get the functions. No problem. No problem. I did another one in the other classes too, so I was just checking. I was going to do that. All right, here we go. We have f of x is equal to, and we have the system here. Better bracket. We have x plus 1 squared, let's say between negative infinity is less than or equal to x is less than 3. Then let's go with uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna make this negative three. Negative three, because I want to do this one. Absolute value of x from negative three less than or equal to x is less than positive. So we're gonna have this one in blue, and this notation tells me that. You know, it's, it's, up, it's active all the way to the left until what point? Negative 3 is our boundary point. So we're looking right here. There's no 1s. It's saying that it goes from negative infinity all the way to negative 1, negative 3. Oh, I said it. So it, it's existing all there, right? And let's say this is negative 3, and that is going to be one of my boundary lines. So the blue function exists on that side, given by the domain. The red function is going to exist over here, you know, in all, both directions. Right? So the domain restriction tells us where it exists. Find the boundary first, because then when you start to, you know, if I'm making the parabola and I start drawing it here, and I have to stop at negative 3, I'm not going to draw the rest of it. You can draw it all and erase it, though. Okay. So let's do uh, let's do this one first. So this one actually has the vertex over at negative one, and there's no shift up or down because our k is zero. So this is this is where it looks. This is what it looks like. Right here. And I want you to go ahead and in one color or maybe just like label it. What part of that dashed parabola, which is x plus 1 squared, what part of it uh, should we mark in blue? What part of it should we mark in blue? Over here, between these, up on the left side. Hmm. Tell your neighbor, what do they think? Left. Where do we look to figure it out? Right there. This tells us where it exists. Uh, 
No, oh, I think he just visualized this. All right, I see a lot of people who also I heard say correct. So where does it exist? Here's our boundary line. We know that's a key point with our domain, where it exists. We know it exists where? To the right? To the left? To the left. It's existing all the way over here. It's continuing up, but really we're interested in the cropping from left to right, our x-axis. So watch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go up. Up. And am I going to put a closed dot or open dot right here? Tell your neighbor. Open dot or closed dot? Tell your neighbor. <coughs> All right, I heard some people changing their mind. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Adelia, what, what did you what did you guys find? Oh no, Ryan just said you just said pointing out the reminders like that. <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know. Okay. But this is also I could put this. This is when it's just less than or greater than. This one's gonna be less than or equal, less than greater than or equal to. Okay. Just think more ink. More ink. It's kind of it. This has less ink, less ink. More ink, more ink. This is more defined. This is less defined. I mean, there's some ways to mnemonically, however you remember it, it's, it's fine. Uh, we said open. Guess what I'm going to do with the rest of the function on the other side? Get it out of there. Because we're not allowed to have that function on that side. Yeah? All right. This one, do we remember what this looks like? Like this, right? The V, right? So I know that if there's no transformation or anything, it's just the absolute value of x, that's our parent function, and it starts at the origin, goes up at 45 degrees, up at 45 degrees, and now all I have to figure out is open or close dot for that location. Tell your neighbor what you think, and you will be able to use Desmos to graph these. If you don't remember the parent function yet, you will know after we work with Desmos enough. Wait, Mr. Yeah. how do you know if the point is like open Open or closed. See, yeah, I look at how this is described here. Negative infinity is less. That should be less. That should be. Oh, is less okay. than x is less than negative three. Yeah. So this is saying right. it's not less than or equal to negative three. It's just less than it. Oh, because it had like it was like equal to. So that part up there was messing yeah. up. I'm sorry. It's always in relation. It never is in relation to infinity because we won't be able to put a dot open or close on that part of it. But we can put the dot open or close. At so the inflection or like a change point, not inflection, but a change point. Open or close dot, guys? Close. close. How did we know for those that didn't know? Right there. Because this function is from negative 3 to positive infinity, but it could actually equal negative 3, this function value could be equal to this negative 3, so I have to put a close dot because that could be included. Um, this isn't continuous. There's a little gap. I want you in your first roller coaster you make not to make any gaps. You can't have it where the tracks don't line up. You have to jump. But for your second and third roller coaster, you can make gaps and jumps and all whatever you want. You can add a little picture. You can input pictures in Desmos if you want to steal some from online and make it jump through someone's face or something. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> oh man, now everyone's gonna spend time just finding your faces. <laughs> Dang it. Questions. What if it is crossed at a point? So then that would just be a system of equations. That would be a solution for the two functions. But when you're doing piecewise functions, there there isn't much overlap. If there is overlap. Say if we had this one was negative 4, right? I mean, this would just keep going a little bit beyond it. It would be over there. You may see something like that. But piecewise functions have more of a utility to them. They're, they're making it so that between each domain window, between each cropping of the x's, you have a different function. So it would be, you know, between 5 and infinity, we could just have a straight line, y is equal to 2. And you would probably have it so that they don't overlap. But they could. It's not against the rules. It's not against the rules. 
We're doing it kind of right now in the scenario of a, the scenario of like a roller coaster. Different scenarios may have different options. I mean, you could think of any abstraction, and we could have multiple values at the same at the same points. This would be more of a function, piecewise, func piecewise function. <laughs> piecewise relation would be where they overlap, because then a vertical line test makes it so that we hit it more than once, which is fine. I mean, a circle hits it more than once. We can have these things. Okay. So right now, though, I'm, I'm talking about kind of a, a real specific application. So this is like to design. Is this a good uh, uh, roller coaster? <laughs> Probably not. And this ejection seat right here, then you go down. <laughs> you can make any kind of a uh, roller coaster that nobody could survive if you want. You can do that. Oh man, everyone went, oh, I'm doing that. Okay. <laughs> All right, send somebody back to go get the Chromebooks. Uh, if you're watching at home, check at Moto for some uh, supportive aids there. Okay.